He don't do anything without asking the Holy Spirit of God first. It is dependency. It's John chapter 15. The Lord says, Hallelujah. Woo. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask the Father whatsoever you will in my name and he'll give it to you. But remember, without me, you can do nothing. I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to ask him even what restaurants you should go to for lunch. The Lord wants you to ask him, hallelujah, where? You should go grocery shopping. And the Lord may say this place one week and that place another because you're about to come into the harvest and the divine appointments like never before. Yes. Does anybody receive that? Yes. Hallelujah. Pastor Cindy said to me last week, you didn't give us any Missouri stories. You were just on vacation. We didn't have, we didn't hear any stories. I'll tell you this, and this is in alignment with what the Spirit of God was just saying. We were coming out of Palmyra, Missouri, and we needed to get gas. And as we, we went to, to stop at a gas station in Palmyra, Holy Spirit said no. How many know we needed to get gas? Holy Spirit said no. So I knew there was another gas station on the edge of Palmyra. I went to pull in. Holy Spirit said no. I knew the, the nearest gas station was probably 20 miles down the road. Holy Spirit said go. How many know in the Lord you're going to go from no to go as you walk in obedience? Amen. Hallelujah. So we drive out of Palmyra and there's this one little gas station that's at this intersection of 61 and where we needed to turn. So we go into that intersection, through that intersection, into the gas station I park, and right next to me is a couple with their new little babe pumping gas, and Holy Spirit says, it's time for a divine appointment. So I got to share Jesus with the gentleman. This gentleman, I'll tell you guys, he studied Christianity, he studied Judaism, he'd studied Islam, he'd studied Buddhism, and I tell you what, guys, that is a trap of the enemy. Yeah. Why is that a trap of the enemy? Because it creates people that know a whole lot about religions, but believe nothing. Yes. Yes. And that's exactly the case that it was with Sheldon as I shared Jesus with him. He was saying, well, how do I know if it's Jesus? How do I know if it's Jehovah? How do I know if it's this or that? And I just started sharing Jesus with him and sharing what Jesus had done in my life. And by the time we were done with the conversation, I said to him, can I pray for you? We're in the middle of a truck stop parking lot. I said, can I pray for you? He said, yes. I said, can I take your hands? He said, I don't know. I grabbed him anyway. Hallelujah. And prayed over that man of God at the truck stop. Now let me ask you a question. How good is our God? Because Sheldon and his family had come out of St. Louis. They, they got gas at that truck stop and they were headed to Iowa City. We came out of Palmyra, Missouri. We stopped at that truck stop to get gas heading over into LaBelle, Missouri. God made sure we were there at the very same time. Somebody say our God is an awesome God. And the Lord says as the harvest is coming, do not be concerned about whether or not those that you're ministering to are going to come to the refuge. The Lord said, go forth and harvest the seed and I determine where the seedling yeah. will go. I determine where the sprout will go. The Lord said, you just go forth and share me. Hallelujah. And I will direct paths. Yeah. How many receive that? The Lord said, I'm raising up a people who will go to the truck stops, to the Walmarts. They'll go all over over the place where I send them and they will make me known. They will not make themselves known. They will not make a church known, but they will go forth to make me known. They're the nameless. They're the faceless that I'm raising up. Get ready! The Lord says. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord says, do not say in this hour that I'm not this or I'm not that. The Lord says, do not say in this hour, I'm not Benny Hinn or Billy Graham. Hallelujah. The Lord says, in this hour, you just be who I've called you to be. The Lord says, Isaiah 60, are you not the sprout that I have planted for my glory? The least of you will become a hundred and the smallest a mighty nation. For I, the Lord, have spoken it. And in my time, I will do it. 
God says don't get impatient waiting for my timing because my timing is coming quickly than what you think. Amen. Get into alignment. My way, my timing, my blueprint, my call, my way, God says. Amen. How many receive it? Amen. Hallelujah. We used to joke around and say my way or the highway. The Lord says you're either going to go my way at the end of the age or you're going to risk missing what I'm about to do. How many receive it? Amen. His way is the high way. Yes. Amen. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9. And we're going to talk about the timing of God today. And I believe this is going to be a timely message for everybody. How many receive that? Amen. Amen. Because I'm telling you, you're on the verge of something great in the Lord. Yes. I'm telling you, you're on the verge of a breakthrough. I'm telling you... Victory is about to be poured out over you like oil from the horn of anointing. I'm telling you, God's about to move you into a place in Him you've never been before. Barriers to intimacy with God that you've been facing are about to be jealously torn down by the Lord Jesus Himself. You're about to go to higher levels if you, as you go to a deeper place of submission to Him. And isn't that a word that we've been hearing in the realm of the Spirit? Submission, submission, submission. If you will surrender to submission to God, there's a mission that He has for you that's like none other that you've ever heard of, seen of, dreamed of, or dared to imagine. How many received that in the Lord? Hallelujah. All right, hallelujah. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9. Let's stand up to honor the Word of God. You know, Brother Scott was speaking last week, and he went into the Word quickly, and somebody taps me on the shoulder, and they're like, Get up, Pastor. Get up. He's speaking the Word. I'm like, ooh, hallelujah. So we're up this morning. By the way, did you not enjoy that message last yeah. night? Yeah. Were we not gifted as, as Brother Scott just taught? That was a teaching. That was instruction. That was a forerunner word. And I want to encourage you if, you, if you have not heard the teaching on Hebrides, catch it on Facebook or YouTube. You can go to our website, therefugeweb.org, and through the bottom of the, the homepage, you can get to all of our recordings there. Hallelujah. So the Word of God says this in Ecclesiastes 9.9. 9. Now we may say this is a little slated towards men, but this is for women also. The Word of God says, Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days, for this is your lot in life, in your toilsome labor done under the sun. Now, how many know if we just stopped at verse 9, that's a pretty discouraging verse, <laughs> right? Meaninglessness, hopelessness, toil. How many know God is taking you out of a place of vain labor and into a place of kingdom productivity? Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? So notice, here's the key in understanding what he's really saying in verse 9. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. How many received that word? Amen. Right now, people are saying, God, when are you going to open up this door? God, when are you going to make this happen? God, when is this going to take place? And you know what Holy Spirit is saying to some right now? Whatever your hand finds to do in this season, do it with all your might. If it's intercede, intercede with all your might. If it's serve, serve with all your might. Come on. If it's pressing into intimacy, press into intimacy with all your might. If God has you in a secular job, do it with all your might as unto the Lord. Yes. How many are hearing what God's saying? Yes. Because the Lord says, somewhere in the process, I'm going to turn the water into wine. Yes. So notice what Solomon says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For the grave or sheol, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Mm. But then he says, I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. How many know that's a word for today? The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favor to the learned. What is God saying? In the end times, man's rules and man's wisdom are not going to apply because God's going to be moving at a supernatural level and He's going to be doing a lot of things that make no sense to man 
And a lot of things that many in the church are not going to understand. Thank you. He says in the Old Testament, can a nation be born in a day? Watch what God's about to do in your life on the third day. How many received that in the Lord? Now notice the end of verse 11. He says, but time and chance happen to them all. Isn't that interesting? Somebody say time. time. Somebody say chance. chance. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net and birds are taken in a snare, so men are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. Please be seated. Now, if you're thinking to yourself right now, why in the world did Pastor just take us through that passage? Because we're going to find in the middle of a season in Solomon's life where he was distraught, where he had been drawn into all kinds of things, and he was questioning the meaning, the meaning of life, God was still speaking through him. The spirit of wisdom was still speaking through him. How many received that? Amen. So we can't take the book of Ecclesiastes and say, no, not going to get much out of that. God made sure it was included in the canon. How many received that? Amen. All right. So let's start talking about the timing of God. And I just believe that this word is going to encourage you in the Lord. Let's just start out by saying this, and let's see if we all agree. God's timing is generally not our timing. Hallelujah. Does anybody agree with that? Yeah. Our timing is generally not God's timing, and let's just establish that fact from the beginning. And as we get deeper into the end of the age, we're going to see a greater gap between our timing and God's timing. That's why we've got to be a people that talk to the Holy Spirit, seek the Holy Spirit before we do anything. How many receive that? Amen. Hallelujah. I was at work the other day. It was Friday morning. I had to work the front desk, the front lobby desk at Bergstrom all day long. If you'd have called Bergstrom, you'd have heard my voice answering the phone. Thank you for calling Bergstrom. I help you. That's what you would have heard. Hallelujah. I have to remember where I am, right, when I'm answering that phone. Anyway, hallelujah. So that's where I was working. I thought, you know what? I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. I'm heading to the restroom, and I'm going to get some coffee. And Holy Spirit says, don't drink coffee today. Now, how many know it's time to submit yes. when Holy Spirit speaks? Because many of us have been asking, Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to me. If we begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, but we don't obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will become very quiet. Yes. So Holy Spirit just simply said, don't drink coffee today. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, what am I drinking? Holy Spirit said, remember the two bottles of water that Holly packed you? Yes, Lord, that's what you're drinking. Okay, Lord. How do we know he knows my body better than I do? Yes. Amen? Amen? See, Holy Spirit, if you're wondering, what is that? See, we're so used to seeking the Holy Spirit for big things. We're so used to seeking the Holy Spirit in the midst of a disaster. Holy Spirit says, I want to teach you how to seek me in the little things so that when the big things happen, you already have a habit developed in your life of seeking me. And the Lord says, the big things will become easier. I'll even speak to you and tell you what to do before something happens. Because the bride desire, the bridegroom desires to hide nothing from his bride. How many receive that? Amen. Okay. So God's timing is not our timing. Can we agree on that? Amen. Okay. But God says through listening to the voice of my spirit, I want to teach you to tune your ear to my timing. So I play a little guitar. I'm trying to practice more because I believe we're going to have live worship in this house. Amen? Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. I've been in the house before. I picked up an, a guitar off the altar and I started playing and Cindy's been in the sound booth and I can just look and see the look on her face because I started strumming that guitar before tuning it. <laughs> and it was out of tune and she could pick it up unplugged from the sound booth. Why? She's learned to tune her ear to what an instrument should sound like so when it doesn't sound the way that it should, it registers on her beautiful face. How many love Pastor Cindy? Amen. Holy Spirit says, I want to teach you how to tune your ear. So when you hear someone say something, you know whether it's not of me. 
So when, you know, when you're trying to, to figure out what to do, you ask and you hear my voice. I want to teach you how to tune your ear. I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit is God wants to teach us how to walk with one foot in the earth and the other in the realm of the spirit at all times. Yeah. He says at the end of the age my people are going to stop going from the flesh to the spirit to the flesh to the spirit to the flesh to the spirit. He says I'm going to teach you how to walk in the place of the spirit even as you dwell in a body of flesh. Yeah. Because your flesh will no longer be in charge. Yeah. My spirit yes. will be in charge. Uh -huh. How do you learn how to do that? One submission at a time. One prayer at a time. One day at a time. I'm walking past the coffee pot. Andrew, you're not going to drink coffee today. Okay, I guess I'm not drinking coffee today. Anybody get that? God wants to teach you how to come to a place of rapid, radical obedience. Now, why is that? Holy Spirit wants me to ask you what restaurant I'm going to. If we don't learn how to obey the voice of God now, wait till the days get really dark. And the Lord may bring you to a place where ra rapid, radical obedience literally saves your life. Yes. Because Holy Spirit may say, don't go there. Yes. Come on, yes. don't go there. Yes. Go over here. God will hide you. God will protect you. He'll keep you safe. We're going to walk in Psalm 91 anointing. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the trap of the fowler. How many received that in the Lord? So this is what God wants us to understand once we get past the point that His timing is not our timing. Secondly, God wants to understand this today. He wants us to get this. Everybody is given a time and a chance in God's plan. We don't necessarily know when it is. We don't necessarily know how it's going to come about. God says, I just want you to learn to be in tune with my spirit. So let's be honest this morning. How many here are waiting for God to open up a door? How many are here are believing God's called you to ministry and you're waiting for a door to open? How, come on now. I believe everybody in this room is. For some, that door's opening in this house. Some around this house. God wants to open up doors. Well, what's my responsibility right now? To be learning how to submit to the Holy Spirit in everything, to pursue intimacy with Jesus, to get my ear in tune with the Spirit of God. How do you receive that in the Lord? By the way, you don't have to understand. Faith precedes understanding. Come on. Holy Spirit said, Andrew, don't drink coffee today. I'll say yes in faith. I don't have to understand. Right? You will come into the understanding. In fact, God's about to bring you into some things that you aren't going to understand. Come on. And people around you aren't going to understand them. But if your ear is tuned to the Holy Spirit, you're going to do what the Holy Spirit says. And you're going to be blessed. Can I hear an amen? amen. God wants to get your ear in tune. You know, let's go to John chapter 12 and verse 23. I want us to see something. How many know that Jesus is the template? Would anybody agree with me? Yeah. If we want to see how we should live, we should read through the Gospels. Now, I'm not discounting the Paulian letters. Can I hear an amen? I want you to understand that. But I always like to look and see how did Jesus approach this? What did the Lord Jesus do? Can I hear an amen? Amen. So I want you to grab a hold of this in the Lord because this is crucial. Notice John 12, 23. Jesus replied, the hour has come. Now it's interesting because in the Hebrew and in the Aramaic and the Greek, the word time and the word hour are interchangeable. So we could put it this way. Jesus replied, the time has come. How many know that Jesus always wanted to walk in the timing of the Father? Can I hear an amen? amen. So he said, the time has come. What? For the Son of Man to be glorified. How did he know that? His ear was in tune to the Spirit of God. How will you know when your hour, your time has come? 
only through your ear being in tune to the Holy Spirit. Is anybody hearing this? Amen. So he says, the hour, the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And I tell you the truth. <laughs> How many know when Jesus says, I tell you the truth, the truth is telling you the truth. Amen. It doesn't get truer than that. <laughs> what did he say? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by you. It's very interesting, and I want you to grab a hold of this. How many know that Jesus is very intentional? So all of a sudden in John 12, as he says, my time or my hour has come to be glorified, then he seems to say something that's completely out of place, especially if we're walking in the flesh. He said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. What in the world does that have to do with God's timing? Let me tell you what it has to do with God's timing. If you're not willing to go into the ground like a seed and die, you're never going to get into God's timing for your life. Why did the time come for Jesus to be glorified? Because he was willing to be the kernel that went into the ground and died. So what's the key for you to really begin to walk in what God has for you? Be willing to die. Right? What happens? The seed goes into the ground, the hard outer shell breaks apart, and new life comes through it. God may be saying, if you're really wanting to see me open that door, then you need to be willing to die to some things. Okay, there's one amen. Hallelujah. It's not an easy word. But notice what the Lord says. Verse 25. The man who loves his life will lose it. While the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Amen. Amen. You know, that's what the Spirit of God is saying to the church right now. Follow Jesus. The church has been following a lot of things. But God is calling out a remnant who will follow him. Can I hear an amen? amen. And he says, and where I am, my servant will be also... My Father will honor the one who serves me. He says, honor me and I'll honor you. Amen. Yeah. Now notice this. He says, now my heart is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour or this time? No! It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Yeah. What's Jesus saying? Father, now that my time has come, should I back away? No! How many here are dying so that Jesus can live? Amen. The Lord says when the hour comes, don't back away. You were made for this hour. Hallelujah. God saves the best wine for last. You were saved. You were born. You were brought into the greatest hour in the history of mankind. You're going to walk in and live out things that the prophets who prophesied them long to see fulfilled. Yeah. And it's going to happen through intimacy with Jesus. He said, I'm going to have you at the right place at the right time so you can bring glory to my name. Yeah. The word says, then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And the crowd that heard it, woo, that was there that heard it, said that it thundered while others said an angel spoke to him. Isn't that interesting? Jesus talked about submission to the timing of the Father and saying yes to the Father even up to the moment that something was about to happen that would be the most challenging thing he'd ever been through as he was walking the earth. And what was his response? Yes, Father. Then he heard the Father speak. So you want to hear the voice of God? Give God your yes, and you're going to begin to hear the voice of God like never before. Notice verse 30. Then Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. But now the time has come for judgment on the world. Isn't this interesting? Now it's interesting, the world there means the cosmos in the Greek. It means everything, the universes, the world, and everything. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto myself. Now this is interesting. 
where the Lord says here, but now is the time for judgment on the world. That word judgment means, the way it's used in the Greek, to bring into orderly agreement. Do you know what Jesus really said there? Now is the time for the cosmos to come into orderly agreement. How is it going to happen as the Son of Man is lifted up in the earth? Is anybody catching this? So what is God wanting to do in your life right now? Bring your life into order. What is God wanting you to do right now? Surrender to the Holy Spirit so your life can come into agreement with Him. Why? Judgment is coming. God is saying, get in alignment with me. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now we've got to understand something here. In John chapter 12, as we're going through verse 23, all the way down to verse 33, we see the word hour used and we see the word time used. Does everybody agree? Amen. In the Greek, there's two different words for time. And we've got to understand this. The first word for time is chronos. Anybody ever heard of chronos before? Okay, you should take a look at your watch. You're looking at chronos. In fact, on my watch, I see at the top chronograph. That literally comes right out of the Greek. Chronos means measured, ticking, quantitative time like a clock. Isn't that interesting? And it always means or refers to time that moves forward. Time that moves forward. So chronos time, grab a hold of this. What's the message about today? Walking in the perfect timing of God. Chronos always moves forward. For the heathen, for the born again filled with the Holy Spirit believer, for everybody, chronos is always moving forward. Do we agree? Yeah. But here's the thing. Our God is not bound by chronos time. We need to understand this. He who creates the law is not bound by the law. Does anybody receive that? So God is not bound by chronos time. And in the word in the old covenant, there's a few occasions where God says, I'm just going to show that to you. Come on now. Joshua is pursuing the enemy. And as he's pursuing the enemy and the sun's going down and he knows when the sun's go, when it goes down, he can't pursue the enemy any longer. Filled with the Spirit of God from his chariot, he says, Son, stand still. Yeah. Woo. Wow. And the word indicates for over 24 hours, the sun stood still. Why did it not rise or set? Because the man of God spoke through the power and authority of God, who's God over Kronos time. Hallelujah. And the sun stood still. Amen. How many received that? Amen. Okay. Happened again in the word. Hezekiah was dying. The prophet shows up and says, get your house in order. Prophet leaves. He starts crying on his bed. God, remember me. Remember what you've had me do. Before the prophet even gets out of the courtyard, God says, speak to him. Go back to him and tell him I'm going to add 15 years to his life. And he says, and what will the sign be from God? Do you want the sun to go forward on the steps? Or do you want the sun to go backwards? Man of God says going forward is Kronos time. He said, I want to see the shadow go backwards. And God laid a hold of Kronos time and shifted it and time went backwards. Yeah. It's in the Word of God. Amen. The Lord says, if I'm not subject to Kronos time, if I can make Kronos time that was designed to move forward, move backward, then I'm the God who can redeem the time that the enemy has stolen. And I'm up to say, take over in your life. Don't you limit me, says the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. Lord says, at the end of the age, I have to have a people that walk in faith. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So can we come to agreement from the heathen to the spirit-filled, born-again, intimate believer of Jesus, all man is bound by Kronos time. Yeah. But God is not. Yeah. Meaning, 
Those who walk with God and in the Spirit of God have the potential of being the walk, being able to walk in time in a way that doesn't align with chronos. Hallelujah. Okay? Promise you're going to love me when I say this. There are some that God has sent back into time to share Jesus with someone to be saved and then brought them back into the current time. Come on now. Well, isn't that going to throw off the time flux continuum? No, it's not. How many know God is in control of time? Yes. Hallelujah. And I believe we need to change the way we look at the timeline because my Bible says God sees the end from the beginning. We're standing here and looking there. He's already there and looking here. Yes. Did I get that? Yes. So how many know Chronos time does not have a legal right to function in the realm of the Spirit. You are not bound by the chronos in the realm of the Spirit. Do you want to know what timing goes forth in the realm of the Spirit? Kairos timing. The problem is we get saved and all we know is chronos. God says come up to a higher level and I want to teach you kairos. Kairos in the Greek is K-A-I-R-O-S, if you are a note taker. K-A-I-R-O-S. And are you ready for this? This is a two-part definition. Are you ready for the first part? It means deep time. As in deep calls unto deep. Isn't that interesting? Kronos is forward time, but Kairos is deep time. Here's the second part of the definition. Time when the world seems to stop. You know what that tells me? For Joshua, Joshua through the authority of the one who created time, shifted Kronos time into Kairos time. What did he say? Kronos, stop! Kairos, manifest! Hallelujah. In a simple sentence where he said, Son, stand still. That is what happened in the realm of the Spirit. You are born of the Spirit. What did Jesus say to Nicodemus? You must be born again. Those who are born of the Spirit. When you are born of the Spirit, Kairos time is available to you. And I'm going to tell you this in the Lord and understand me as I say this and if you're challenged by it, Praise God. And take it to the Holy Spirit. God wants to teach you how to operate more in Kairos time than you do in Kronos time. Because Kairos time is God's timing in the midst of the Kronos. How many are getting this? Come on. And so what was Jesus saying in the midst of the Kronos? My Kairos has come. My deep time has come. And there are going to be times in the timeline when your deep time comes. When your kairos time comes. How many receive that? Hallelujah. First comes the knowledge. Then comes the test. We have had audio, visual, and power issues in this building all morning long. We go to start praise and worship and I see the electrical connection come undone and hit the floor and nobody's around it. I'm going, what's going on? I went back to Pastor Sydney. She said, boy, the devil's upset about something, isn't he? I said, oh, yes, he is. I sound like Terry. Oh, yes, he is. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, yes, he is, Brother Andrew. Hallelujah. Glory. Let's make him more upset. He didn't want this word out. He knew we were going to get him to, this is the air I breathe, and there's going to be a realm of the Spirit begin to open up. Oh, don't be discouraged. Don't be afraid. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Holy Spirit, you are wisdom. Your wisdom, God. Hallelujah. How many bless the name of the Lord in this place? Hallelujah. Now, I want you to notice something, and, and let's go back. Woo! To Ecclesiastes. How many are enjoying this word? Yes. Don't check out on me because this entire word is important. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now, I want you to notice something here that, that seems very unique. He says here in verse 12, he says, Moreover, no man knows when his time will come. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is Solomon talking about Kronos time or Kairos time? The ones he's speaking to are already in Kronos time. Are they not? He's speaking about Kairos time. He says, no man knows when his Kairos time will come. Right. Which means right. what? You've got to be ready. And notice Solomon doesn't say, no man knows if his deep time will come. He says, no man knows when his deep time will come. Which means what? God has a plan for everybody at the end of the age. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to come. Then what do you need to be doing right now? Pursuing intimacy with Jesus, surrendering to Jesus, learning how to be in tune with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Those that are of the Spirit are like the, with the, like the wind. How many receive this? God is preparing you right now. God, when's the door going to open? God says, stay in preparation. Because the preparation is every bit as much as important as the release. God says, remember the Olympic runner that trains day after day, year, month after month, year after year for a race that only lasts a matter of seconds. God says at the end of the age, there's going to be an acceleration of time. Things are going to be happening very quickly. For some, it's almost going to be like you're watching it happen. But you're going to be right in the middle of it. God says, get in the arena of preparation. Get into the soil and die. God says, now is the time of preparation, and your chronos will become kairos. Hallelujah. You receive that? Yes. All right. So notice what he says. He says, I have seen something else under the sun. Ah, uh, yes. Let's go down to verse 12. Moreover, no man knows when his kairos time will come. Somebody say amen. 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 And let's stop right there. I was just about to move away from the microphone with my Bible when Pastor Cindy was going to go. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. We need, we need to understand a couple things, okay? As we get into John chapter 12, we're primarily looking at text that was written in Greek and Aramaic. But how many know those were in Ecclesiastes? We're looking at text that was written in Hebrew. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, okay, I, I want you to see something here. Verse 12. The word says, moreover, no one knows when his hour will come. And we've established the fact in the Hebrew, hour and time are used interchangeably. Can I hear an amen? amen? Okay. Now, this is interesting. In Hebrew here, the word that is used for time is F. E-T-H. F. Okay. So the word says, no man knows when his F will come. I thought you just said no man knows when his Kairos time will come. Yes, but we're back in the Hebrew here. Okay, so we need to understand that. F, E-T-H in the Hebrew means time or season. So the word could literally be interpreted here, no man knows when his season will come. What happens when something comes in the season? It's come out of the winter where it felt barren. The spring has come, the roots come alive, the sap goes up, the seedling begins to come forth, and fruit is born. You know what God is saying for you right now? You're coming out of the winter into the spring, and your greatest hour of fruitfulness is upon you. What did Jesus say? John 15, 16. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go forth and bear fruit. When do you bear fruit? In season. What did we read today in, woo, in Psalm 92? You will continuously bear fruit. Didn't we read that? In Psalm 92, what does that mean? There's a place in the realm of the Spirit where you don't go in season and out of season. You just stay continuously in season and bear fruit. Well, Pastor, I don't, I don't know if I can grab a hold of that. Well, that's, that's okay. Book of Revelation says that the tree of life is in heaven. It's on both sides of the river, and it continuously bears fruit, 12 crops. Isn't that what the Word of God says? Where was that tree originally? It's in the garden. 
So we see that tree in the garden. We see that tree in heaven. That tree is everywhere in between. God says, I want to bring you to a place in the realm of the spirit where you continuously bear fruit. You don't go in and out of season. That's a parallel to the spirit of God saying, I'm going to teach you how to not go from the flesh to the spirit, the flesh to the spirit. I'm going to teach you how to just dwell in the spirit. Because when you dwell in the spirit, you can continually bear fruit. Oh, is anybody getting excited? Yeah. There's some rhema in this today. If you're not yeah. careful, God's going to take this word. He's going to pull the tongue on your spirit. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, this is interesting um, because I want to take us back real quick to verse 11. At the end of verse 11, just before what I just spoke, he said, but time and chance happen for all. I can understand time. I'm not real big on chance. Amen. amen? Because I, I believe in the divine will of God. The world calls this chance all kinds of things. We don't subscribe to the world. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now I want you to grab a hold of this in the word. So time in the Hebrew is F, E-T-H, and it means time or season, right? Okay, so we've got to understand this. But time, season, and chance. I don't really like that word chance, do you? Okay, well let's go back to the Hebrew. It's the Hebrew word pega, P-E-G-A. And you know what it means? It means something happening that is divine and not random. And it's a cousin to the Hebrew word destiny. Is anybody catching this? So what's the Lord saying here? But everyone's season and destiny will happen. Isn't that interesting? So God says, well, doesn't he say my word will not return void? Does he not say I plan good works for you to do before the foundation of the world comes? And he says, you know what? Your timing, your F, your kairos, your destiny will happen. Amen. 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 From the bathroom. So, what's your responsibility? Twofold. Actually, threefold. Be ready, say yes, and respond correctly. Because sometimes your destiny may not look like what you think it's going to look like. Okay, a lot of times. Your destiny is not going to look like what you think it's going to look like. Just because you're coming out of the winter doesn't mean your destiny was winter. How many receive that? And just because you've been fruitful and gone dormant and fruitful and dormant doesn't mean that cycle defines the way that your end is going to be. Okay, how many are receiving this stuff in the Lord? I mean, this is really good, isn't it? Here's something else. That word chance, pega in the Hebrew, not only means something divine that's happening that's not random, the picture in the Hebrew is of a door opening and of a hand orchestrating. Ooh. So doesn't that give a little different definition or meaning to the time and chance is going to happen to anybody? He's saying, no, your time and chance is not chronos. I'm pulling the Greek into this. He says it's kairos. It's divine. It's God plan. And you're going to come into it. It's not your timing. It's my timing. Go with it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So let's, let's go back to this, this time. It's very interesting as, as we look at this that God is saying to us, I want you to be a pega people. Now, I want to throw one more thing in here if we haven't had enough yet. Remember in verse 11 at the end of the verse, time means F and then chance is pega. How many know sometimes in the Hebrew words can be combined to give you another meaning? If you combine the word F and pega, you get the Hebrew word peg, P-A-G-U-E. And you know what it means? To make intercession. Or to pray. Can I combine all this together now? Your divine timing of destiny in the Lord is coming. Pray. Amen. Intercede. Because it's coming. 
How many received that? Okay. There's a lot to that. You may have to listen to it again, but God's good, isn't he? What does the enemy want to do to you in the midst of the time that God is calling you to peg, to pray, to say yes, to surrender, to listen to God? Amen. What's God telling you to do? Not only wait on him and let God do what he wants to do in your life, but watch out for the snare. Because the enemy always wants to set a snare for those that are heading down the right path. Because I want you to notice something. Notice what he says here. And this kind of disturbed me until I really started studying it. Verse 12. Moreover, no man knows when his hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net and birds are taken by a snare, so are men trapped by evil times that will fall unexpectedly on them. Church, let me tell you something. Evil times are coming. They're here and they will become more prevalent. The Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 60, darkness will come upon the nations and thick darkness upon the earth. How many receive that? I believe that's verse 2. How many receive that? But the light of God will be upon you. How many receive that? How did Daniel put it in Daniel chapter 7? In the midst of thick darkness, a people are going to know their God and they're going to do mighty exploits. Okay, so what, is, what does Solomon say here? So men are trapped by evil desires that fall unexpectedly or evil times that fall unexpectedly on them. So how many know none of us can say we don't know evil times are coming? Can I hear an amen? Amen. Or know they're coming. What does Solomon say? They come to snare. To snare what? Those who are walking in the F, in the Pega, those that are waiting for their season to come. Do not get caught in the snare. In the Hebrew, the word snare is quahosh. Y-A-Q-U-O-S-H. Yahosh. And it literally is what we interpret snare. Are you ready for this? It means to lay a bait or to lure. So while you are pressing in and going after God and preparing yourself, the enemy is laying snares. And what, would, what is a snare? It's a bait to pull you out of God's timing. It's something to lure you away from a position of faith and believing that God's about to do something mighty in your life. Come on. How many receive that in the Lord? Now the cousin of the word Yahosh is Mokosh in the Hebrew. It's a cousin word for snare, and it means a noose to catch animals. Now, when you're looking at that, and this is still used for hunting, rabbits, and other things, it will be a noose that's generally made out of wire or a clear line, and they set it, I know this being from Missouri, I'm descending from hunters, they're going to set it in the pathway that an animal takes, so when the animal goes through the pathway at night, it will catch around their neck and tighten until they suffocate. So what are you doing? You're following the path, and the enemy is trying to place snares there. Snares are to trip you up, get you off target, move you in the wrong direction. That's why we've got to keep in mind at the end of the age, what you focus on determines what you miss. So we need to stay focused on the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. So what is this time and chance that Solomon is talking about here? Miracle moments of time when things begin to come together in the realm of the spirit and mighty things happen. A Kairos moment is a time that whether you realize it or not, it's like time stands still and something mighty in God happens. Sometimes you realize it while it's happening. Sometimes you realize it after it happens. What you want to do is be that seed that went on the ground and died so you can participate in it, whether you fully realize what's going on or not. And I'm going to tell you there's some Kairos moments you've already participated in that you're not going to understand until you stand before the Lord and you've seen through a dark... Mm. You're seeing right now through a, a, a dark, in a very dark glass, in a very unclear way. But soon you will see Him face to face and you'll understand all things. How many catching this? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting at a lunch table one time with Brother Scott, and, and I'm talking about something that happened early on in ministry where young people started coming to the church where I was serving shepherd, and they, they're getting saved, and they're getting filled with the Holy Spirit, and demons are being cast out, we're going on retreats where you don't know when you're in heaven or earth, and all kinds of wild things are happening. And after I'm done telling the story, Scott says, it sounds to me like you've already been through a revival. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> I looked at Cindy, who was there with me. She's gone. And I looked at Scott and I said, I guess so. You know what it was? We were in a Kairos moment in the realm of the Spirit in that season, and we didn't even realize it. But we didn't miss it. We were in it. Faith precedes understanding. We were in that season operating in faith. The understanding came over a decade later. We're in revival. But whenever God takes you through something like that, he promises the latter glory will be greater than the former glory. And when God brings you into that moment where you realize, whoa, time stood still. It was a Kairos moment. It was just the beginning, not the end. Anybody hearing what the Lord is saying right now? Amen. See, we've got to understand this in the Lord. It's interesting that word Kairos can also in the Greek mean the right time or opportune moment for you to do or say something. Do you know what that tells me? Don't look at Kairos moments as being these huge moments. There's a lot of little Kairos moments going on all around you all the time that if you're in tune, you can participate with them. How many know when I met Sheldon at the gas station in Missouri and shared Jesus with him, it was a Kairos moment. It didn't last for days, weeks, months, or years. It was just a Kairos moment. And in Kairos moments, God can, God can use you in a way that changes the trajectory of people's lives. Yes. And in the midst, God is changing the trajectory of your life. Because in every Kairos moment where you surrender and you walk in it, your faith builds. I don't think you're hearing me. Your faith builds. Can I hear an amen? So, Pastor Cindy, can you take us to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4? 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. How many are enjoying this word? Amen. Amen. So I want you to see something. Okay? The, the word says this. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into this. What is God saying? There's a time, there's a place, there's a season for everything in the Kronos, but Kairos moments, I believe, are available all the time. Don't be a soldier caught up in civilian affairs in this hour. Don't watch so much CNN that you can't focus in the secret place. Don't read every internet news brief and story so that you're out there with 15 million conspiracy theories and wondering what the heck is going on. Get in the secret place and listen to the news broadcast from heaven. Yes. Yes, amen, man. How many receive that? Let's get out of the Kronos and into the Kairos. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, Pastor Cindy, will you give us Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. I, I want you to see this because this is important in the Lord. We've got to understand this. The Word of God says this, For we are God's handiwork. Do you know that word handiwork, if we really take it into the Greek and Aramaic, means masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Anybody getting this? The Lord gave me this picture several years ago. I saw an artist in the realm of the spirit who was working on a sculpture out of a great hunk of stone. And he's working on it and he's starting to, to bring it into being. But then a, a curtain goes up so I can't see what he's doing. And when he gets done, then there is a veil over top of his work. 
But then there's a big party and unveiling and everybody comes together. And I see the unveiling and I take the artist when everybody is watching, take a corner of the cover over his work and pull it off. And as he unveils it, everybody goes, whoa. God says, that's you. You are underneath the veil. He's chipping away. He's working at you. He's developing things. You're dying. He's turning you into his masterpiece. As you become his masterpiece, then what's going to happen? This is it. You are his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Hmm. Hmm. That he has prepared good works that he's prepared in advance for us to do. So when did he do it? Maybe when mom and dad were having a candlelight dinner and decided there was going to be a little romance afterwards, and he went, oh, there's a baby coming. I better figure out some good works for this babe to do. Uh, he created good works for you to do before the foundation of the world was laid. Yes. See, we've got to understand before he ever said, let there be light, he was wearing the wedding garment. Yes. Oh, come on. Okay, I don't think we're getting this because if you really got it, you'd somebody start waving hats and you'd get real real excited about this. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something here, and this may put your theology in a bundle. And if it does, I I partially you know done the ministry today. I'm called to just in that alone, just to challenge you. So I was praying over somebody one time that came out of the occult, was very deep in the occult, and they're literal fallen angels um, that had to be cast out of this person. And so I'm praying for this person, praying for this person, prayed with them once a week for seven years for their deliverance. Once a week for seven years for that person's deliverance. Layer after layer after layer after layer, they're an onion. And sometimes a fallen angel would come up and speak. And I mean, these things were like throwing a rock in a deep pond. They weren't like casting out demons. These things were literal fallen angels. And you find them in people that went very deep in the occult, including brides. And I'll leave it at that. I don't want to glorify anything on this broadcast. This is not a Jesus. So, I'm praying over this person one day, and this, this fallen angel comes up and starts saying horrible things about this person. And I put up, put up with it for a few moments, and finally I said, In the name of Jesus, you be quiet, for she's the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the thing looked at me and spoke through the person and said, I know she's the bride of Christ. And Holy Spirit says, okay, it's okay to ask a question here. And I said, okay. I said, in the name of Jesus, how do you know she's the bride of Christ? He said, because I saw him wearing the wedding garment before he said, let there be light. Time out. Holy Spirit, is, is this accurate? Yes, Andrew, it's accurate. So what was this? This was, a, this was an angel in the realm of the heavenlies that saw Jesus in the wedding garment before he ever created the world. Without him was nothing made that was made, right? And I went, okay, I'm going to file this away. So a number of years later, I'm reading through the Word, I'm spending time with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit says, can I unpack that for you? Please do. <laughs> Holy Spirit pulls up the file, and there it is right in front of me. And I'm, how does this work? And Holy Spirit said, let me tell you how it works. He says, you see Jesus creating the world through Kronos time. Now, I didn't understand Kronos then, but he said through man's eyes and man's time. I said, okay. And he said, Andrew, this is how you see it. You see Jesus at the beginning of the timeline, and he's creating the world, right? You see Adam and Eve, and you see Abraham, and you see Joshua, and you see Malachi, and you see John and Andrew and Peter, and you see Paul, and you see Revelation, and you see the wedding feast of the Lamb. And I said, yes, absolutely, I've read your word. You know that, God. And the Lord said, you're looking at the timeline the wrong way. And I said, okay, please help me understand that. And the Holy Spirit said, Jesus wasn't creating from the beginning of the timeline. He was creating from the end of the timeline. Mm. Now, I was a good Baptist for years. I'm licensed or in Southern Baptist, which is kind of funny. But anyway, I had a powerful encounter with the Holy Ghost that ended my time in the Southern Baptist arena. But anyway, that's why I'm a work guy. 
and a spirit guy. And I think we need to be a people of the word and the spirit at the end of the age. That's Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. We all agree on that. Great. If you don't, just talk to Holy Ghost about that. And so I said, Holy Spirit, what does it look like? He said, well, when does a man wear a wedding garment? I said, at a, at a wedding. Holy Spirit says, when, when is the wedding? I said, at the end of the age. Holy Spirit said, if he's wearing the wedding garment, that's the end of the age. He didn't say, let there be light from back there. He said, let there be light from here. And it went down the timeline. He spoke to that which is not as if it was. And it became. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is anybody getting this? <laughs> Why was he not dressed like in creatorial garb? Whatever that looks like. I don't know. Hard hat and <laughs> apron and slide rule. I, I don't know. Because he wasn't standing there. He sees the end from the beginning. And he spoke it all into existence. And he's not looking at you from here and seeing your back as you're going through the timeline and going, don't do that. Don't, don't you see that snare ahead of you? Don't do that. He's not doing that. He's over here. Yes. And he's going, go, go, go. And the great cloud of witnesses are going, go, go, go. Amen. And he's saying, okay, you need this here? I'm going to move it in. Okay, you need this here? Kairos moment. This, this. Man plans, but God ordains the... Man plans, but God ordains the steps. That's why it is so erroneous when the enemy tries to tell you every single reason why you're disqualified. When God qualified you before the beginning of time. And he created what? Good works for you to do in advance. What are Kairos moments? You're coming into Ephesians 2.10. The good works he's called you to do before he laid the foundations of the world. And he sees it from the end of the timeline. The enemy's over here because you're walking along. You're not worthy. You messed up. You married the wrong person. You did this. You made the wrong choice. And the Lord Jesus is in the wedding garment going... Come. Come. Is anybody getting this? If you get this, you're going to start walking in the supernatural realm and you're not going to need a car to get to church. You're just going to go, right? Where's Pam? It's 930. It's time for prayer to start. Hey, Pastor. I'm telling you, you're going to go from Kronos to Kairos. You're going to start moving in a whole other realm in the Lord. Why do we teach? Because teaching opens up your understanding so you can walk in it. Things are being opened up that you already have faith for. Now, faith is going to mix with understanding and there's going to be a manifestation. Now, does anybody receive this in the Lord? Amen. So what's God saying? My Kairos moments are all around you. I want you to begin to step into them. And the thing is, once you learn how to step into Kairos moments, it just becomes a normal part of your life. Yeah. I'll say to our kids, yeah, we went to a restaurant. And these people sat down next to me and next to us and, and we're talking about Jesus. And then we get to minister to them. And so I got saved and the power of God poured out and the wait staff didn't want to come near us. Gene, we've been to some of those. Some of us in this room, we've been to some of those. And it was powerful. Hallelujah. It was a Kairos moment. God directed us to that restaurant. He made sure that the, the hostess sat us where we were supposed to be sat. We stayed there as long as we were supposed to. And we just were in tune to what spirit God wanted to do. God wants to teach you how that can become your lifestyle. A lifestyle of Kairos moments. And I'm going to tell you in the Lord, there's a place where you'll just walk in the Kairos and that's it. And you will not be bound by the Kairos. You're going to walk in deep time. Is anybody grabbing this in their spirit? Is anybody grabbing this? So, so here's kind of the question here then. How do, I know, how do I know what my destiny is in God? You know, and then how do I know what my timing is in God? And how do I know all this stuff? Number one, stop worrying and start pressing into Jesus. Worry is not of the Lord. Press into Jesus. He said, I'm the rewarder of those who diligently seek me. 
Can I hear an amen? amen? And I tell you what, right now Jesus is calling his people out of religion. He's calling his people out of church churches that are whitewashed tombs, they're glorified graves, and he's calling them into a place where they've never been before. Amen. He said, I'll make you a people without limitation and you'll build a church without walls. Hallelujah. But you have to change. For some people living, listening to this broadcast, it's time for you to move. It's time to, for you to move off your couch and come into the sanctuary. There's some people that are called to this church that are listening to this broadcast that God is calling you to make a geographic move into this region to be a part of the revival and awakening that are coming. Amen. And I want to encourage you to seek the Spirit of God on that. Don't take my word for it. Seek the Spirit of God on that. And if He tells you to move, it's time to move. Amen. How many receive that? Hallelujah. I don't believe Kairos moments happen from the couch. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not, do not forsake the assignment together of yourselves. We love our virtual audience wherever you are. And if you can't geographically be here, we're so glad you listen to the broadcast. But God has Kairos moments for you. Don't miss them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. All right. So how do I find my destiny in God? I think it's easy. We go back to the beginning. What are you talking about, Pastor? What does the word say in Genesis 1-1? In the beginning, God. How many receive that? So what is God wanting you to do? Put God at the beginning of your marriage. Yes. Put God at the beginning of your career. Put God at the beginning of every day. Put God at the beginning of your decision making. Put God at the beginning of your relationships. Put God at the beginning of your week. Yes. Is that receiving this? Yes. Well, the first, very first words of the word. In the beginning, put God in the beginning of everything. Give the Holy Spirit ability to lead everything in your life. You know what God really wants to teach you to do? You get out of bed. You wake up in the morning. Okay, You kind of sit on the edge of the bed and you say, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? <laughs> Holy Spirit, these are your eyes. These are your ears. This is your mouth. This is your voice. This is your heart. Use them to bring glory and honor to Jesus today. Holy Spirit, you see the Kairos moments in this day before I ever get to them. Holy Spirit, help me walk in every Kairos moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Jesus determined I would do before the foundations of the world were laid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get ready. But wait a minute, Pastor, I work. You guys, I have human resources. I work 45 to 50 hours a week. But you know what God will give me at work? Kairos moments with people. You know what God will give me at a restaurant on my lunch break? Kairos moments with people. You know what I do on the way to church? For, or on the way to work? 45 minutes? I intercede. I pig. You know what I do on the way home? Return phone calls safely. Turn text safely. Not when I'm driving, of course. Right? <laughs> Spending time with Jesus, talking to the Lord. See, your Kairos moments are not bound by your vocation. Because if it was, if you know, Kairos didn't work during your working hours, anybody that's working in, in the church wouldn't have many Kairos moments. God knows where you're going to be at any given day and time. That's why if you say, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? Holy Spirit, make sure you live out the Kairos moments because God knows where you're going to go that day before you ever know. Um, how many receive that? God knew who's going to be here in the service before you ever decided you were coming. Can I hear an amen? amen? In the beginning, we've got to understand that. See, we've got to understand the word begins within the beginning. But we also have to understand that God's best creation is yet to come. John chapter 2, where does Jesus do his first wedding? Or his first miracle? At the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Why would Jesus do his first miracle at the wedding? Well, number one, the Father called him to. And he didn't do anything unless he saw the Father doing it. Number two, he was dressed in the wedding garment before he ever said, let there be. Why wouldn't he do his first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee? And when he turns the water into wine, what does the chief guest say? Most men bring out the good wine first and then the cheaper wine when men have had their fill. But you say the best wine for last. This the first of the miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. His disciples put their trust in him and manifested his glory. 
what is God saying here? The best has been saved for last in your life. And as you walk in these Kairos moments, the glory of God is going to manifest as Jesus is glorified. What's the key trait of every Kairos moment you're ever going to walk in? Jesus will be glorified. Not you, not the Refuge Church, not your anointing, not your calling in the fivefold. Jesus will be glorified if you do it the right way. Um, you clap. You amen. clap in the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 How many know there are God's a creative God? He never stops creating. He never stops creating. The best is yet to come. How many receive this? Amen. You know, it's interesting then if we go to, to Genesis 1 2, the word says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, and the, the, and the world was void and without form, but who was brooding over the waters? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was brooding over the waters. Which means what? The earth was in a form of chaos. Holy Spirit shows up. Holy Spirit begins to make something out of nothing. If there's any chaos in your life right now, Holy Spirit says, give it to me. I'm going to brood over the waters and I'm going to make something out of nothing. Yes. I'm going to bring the chaos into order. I'm going to move in situations that you never dreamed I could move in. Get out of the way. Invite me in and watch what I'm going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, how many have seen that in the world? Yeah. Yes, amen. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I want to show you something here in the Lord. How many are enjoying this word? Yeah. All right. Well, Pastor, you preach a long time. Well, I only get some of you once a week. Okay. <laughs> you know I love you as I say that. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. Odd little verse. Solomon says, anyone who is on the living has hope. Even a live dog is better than a dead lion. Do you know how they believe that was originally written? What then is to be chosen? With all who live, there is hope. What then is to be chosen? With all who live, there is hope. What is God saying? If you're still breathing, you've got Kairos moments ahead of you. It's not too late. And God has a purpose, a plan, Kairos moments for you, and you're about to come into them. Have I received that in the Lord? Amen. So the Lord says, you know what? I want to move you into the realm of Kairos to the place where depression has no authority over your life any longer. Amen. To the place where oppression can't work anymore. To that place where you notice that the time of day, the certain time of day and the dark clouds always seem to come. God says, I want to take you to a place where your body may be in this realm, but your spirit's walking in the realm of the heavenlies. Yes. Yes. Amen. Come on. And this Lord says, then your spirit's going to begin controlling your body, not your body affecting your spirit. Amen. God setting us free from soulishness. Can I hear an amen? amen? All right. Now, this is interesting. If we go back and we take a look, whoo, Holy Spirit, have your way. We go back to Ecclesiastes 9 11. Remember, but time and chance happen to them all. Time, Pega, right? Or F. And pega for chance, which means peg. Here's something else I want to point out to you that's interesting. Sometimes in Hebrews, in Hebrew words can have various meanings. That word chance in Ecclesiastes 9:11 can also have this meaning: to collide with something. Hmm. But time. Kairos, hmm, and Pega happen to everyone. You know what the Lord is saying here? Some things you're going to be ready for, and you're going to recognize them, and you're going to walk in them, these Kairos moments, and it's going to be power. Some of them, you're just going to collide with them. Bam! Whoa, and you're in it. Anybody catch this? Uh -huh. Anybody ever been driving down the road and you're like five miles beyond where you thought you should be and you realize I've just been on automatic pilot? How did I get here? Anybody know what I'm talking about? God says there's some moments that you're just going to collide with 
And as God begins to move, you're going to be like, whoa, what in the world is going on? See, this is what God's telling you. He wants to begin to teach you to walk in the supernatural all the time. And you're going to believe at any given moment, heaven can invade earth. And things that have been one way for years can shift when we're walking in the realm of kairos and faith. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. 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 So you know what God is saying? Now is not the time to, for you to be caught in the snare. Now is not the time. He said, I'm speeding up time. Now is not the time where you are pressing in and getting ready and preparing and learning how to walk in Kairos moments. Now is not the time to get caught in the news. He said, now is not the time to get caught up in nets of addiction, rejection, self-centeredness, hurt, pain, woundedness, woundedness, the orphan spirit, or anything else. Now is not the time. Now is the time when the Spirit of God is wanting to set people free and take away the things that would hinder them from being able to walk in their Kairos moments. I'm telling you right now in the realm of the Spirit, there's an anointing for deliverance that's being poured out. God is singing songs of deliverance over you, and there's no longer any excuse for us to stay in our stuff. Amen. Because Holy Spirit will come to come to you periodically and say, I want, I want to get rid of that. I want that. I don't want you to walk into that anymore. I don't want you to watch that anymore. I don't want you to do that anymore. And Holy Spirit say, come on, surrender to me, and deliverance is going to come. Or we can keep walking like we've always walked. I don't know about you, but the time is too short for us to keep walking the way that we've always walked. You better see that. Amen. Pastor Cindy, can you give us Psalm 37, verse 23? See, we've got to understand something in the Lord. And even David understood this back in the Old Covenant. But I believe he pressed from the Old Covenant into the New Covenant. Amen? And experienced intimacy with God. I really believe that with all my heart. How many love the Lord? Amen. I want you to notice Psalm 37 in verse 23. If the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Isn't that interesting? The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Mm -hmm. Master Cindy, do you have that in the King James? Yeah. Let, let's take a look at that in the King James. The steps of a mm -hmm. good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Yeah. Do you know what that means? He stands at the end of the timeline, and he sees all the way through the beginning, I'm about to step, take a step. I don't even know what it is. He just ordered it. I need to take another step. He's ordered that step. I need to take another step. He's ordered that step. In fact, as he's at the end of the timeline and I'm taking a step, shoop, he's putting it there. Am I catching that? See, we got to understand that. And you're going, God, give me the plan. God's going, no, I ordain your next step. Yes. Just take it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody catching that? Yes. Yes. Anybody receive that in the Lord? Yes. This is Hallelujah. so important. If you will begin to realize your life is not Kronos happenstance, it's Kairos purposing of God. And the Lord is saying to some, and I'm going to go back to what I heard God say during praise and worship. Some are crying out to God saying, God, I want you to bring about a radical change in my life. And God says, okay, I'm waiting for you to change. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, I'm waiting for some just to go. Because here's the problem. As much as we don't like this place, it's familiar to us. And as human beings, if we're not walking at a higher level, we'll have a tendency to stay in the familiar, even though it's destroying us, as opposed to taking a God risk and taking a step out. Right. Oh, I'm telling you guys, you can be faithful to a grave. Okay, this may be a controversial statement. My mom went to be with the Lord when I was 21. I don't go put flowers on her grave. She's not there. Amen. I can be faithful to a grave. 
And there are some people being faithful to graves. And God says, I got out of the grave. Why don't you? But Lord, it's what I know and it's familiar and I know what to expect and it's horrible, but at least I know it's going to happen. Oh, and I know everybody there. And oh, and God's saying, take a stop. I ordained it. Take it. How many receive that? There's some listening in right now on the broadcast and God is saying this to you. How many receive this in the Lord? Amen. Yeah. You know, Shata sent me a text yesterday and she said, Pastor, she said, you know, there's all these changes that are going on in governments. Mm -hmm. You notice these prime ministers that are stepping down. Do you notice what's going on? Mm -hmm. And she gave me a powerful verse to go along with it out of Daniel. I said, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. God is ordering steps more than ever before yes. right now at the end of the age. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're about to see government shift. Mm -hmm. We're about to see God move people out of the way that have been standing in the way. We're about to see that God, the hand of God, undeniably begin to move things. Because God is setting things up for the return of His Son. How many know this? Amen? He said, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? God says, I'm calling you into a deeper place of faith. And we're about to see the hand of God go to this nation and uproot this and put in this. God go to this nation, uproot this, put in this. God go to this nation and just completely move it away. We're about to see God do all kinds of things. Well, Pastor, give me an example. We just repealed Roe versus Wade. And it stood since 1973. Do you know what amazes me about Roe versus Wade? You'd think that Roe versus Wade, and I know I'm getting political, hopefully we don't get bumped here. Do you know what Roe versus Wade has done in the church? It's accomplished the will of the Lord. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Amen. And Roe versus Wade has divided the church. Yeah. Because before Roe versus Wade, some folks just kind of kept quiet about how they felt. Roe versus Wade happened, and you know what has amazed me? The outrage in the church yeah. over Roe versus Wade yeah. being revealed. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something, folks. The Lord has grown tired of babies being murdered in the womb. Yeah. The Lord has grown tired. He never wanted Roe versus Wade to be ratified, and Roe versus Wade has grieved him since 1973. Do you know what's happening now in America? America is coming on a collision course with God's Kairos timing. I believe Roe versus Wade had to be moved out of the way. And I believe America is on a collision course with revival and awakening. For those who are willing to receive it, I believe Roe versus Wade held that true revival from spreading across our nation in fulfillment of Joel chapter 2. Okay? Why does the enemy hate America? Because he understands America is a gateway. Come on. Israel is a gateway and America is a gateway. And the enemy fears revival coming to America because when it hits America, boom! It's going to go out through yeah. the entire earth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, God has been jealous to repeal Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. How many receive this? Amen. I believe, now catch this in the realm of the Spirit. How many know that God, nothing that happens takes God by surprise? Okay. How many know he knew that man would row to Rook? Mm, 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 mm. How many know that he knew Roe versus Wade would be ratified in 1973? Mm -hmm. How many know that he also knew in 2022 the Supreme Court would bring an end to Roe versus Wade? Yes. If we believe our God sees the end from the beginning, yes. we believe this. Can I hear an amen? Amen. How many know pre-1973 God wanted to release revival over our nation? Yes. I believe Roe versus Wade hindered that. I believe now that Roe versus Wade has been removed, that revival will come. How many believe that was? Why? Because the purposes of God will not be thwarted. We've got to understand that. The purposes of God will not be thwarted. How many know if that stands for a nation? It also stands for you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. If he knew Roe v. Wade was going to happen, he knew when it was going to be repealed, and he knew it was going to pour out revival, he knew you were going to marry that woman. He knew you were going to marry that man. He knew you were going to move when you weren't supposed to. He knew when you were going to make this choice. He knew when you were going to make that choice. And you know what? He also knew when he was going to bring you back around to the right place. Can I hear an amen? amen? And when he was going to release, when he wanted to release it back here, he's going to release it now. But the latter glory will be greater than the former glory. Amen. So God says, I want you to get in position. I knew you were going to step away, but I also knew when you were going to step back. Yeah. How many received that in the Lord? And God says, I'm preparing you for something amazing. What does God say he wants you to do right now? Even if you stepped away, even if you married the wrong person, even if you blew it, even if you moved when you weren't supposed to, even if you pursued a business degree when you were supposed to go to seminary. <laughs> how many know God knew it was going to happen? And how many know God knew when he was going to get the train back on track? Yes. How many received that? Okay. What does he want you to do now as you're coming into Kairos moments? Respond. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. As you're responding, the enemy's going, but you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that, you're this, you're that, you did this, you did that. Listen to the one who's at the end of the timeline. Not the one who's speaking out here or behind you. Listen to the one who's at the beginning of the timeline. And how do you know if we do that, amazing things are going to happen? Hallelujah. And I hear an amen. amen. Hallelujah. What's God saying us to us in the season? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. He says, trust in me with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge me in everything, and I will make the crooked path straight before you. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. See, we've got to understand that in the Lord. Amen. We've got to understand this. Notice what God is saying in Isaiah 43, 19. And, and I'm going to begin to wrap up with this. This is where Hannah goes, okay, it's the first time you're saying this. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 19. Isn't it great to see all of yes, our kids yeah. in the sanctuary today? Yes. And an amazing young lady over there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory. Isaiah 43, 19. What is God saying right now to you? The Lord says this, I'm saying, see, I'm doing a new thing. <laughs> Which means you probably need to go back to verse 18. What does verse 18 say? Forget the former things and don't dwell on the past. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. What to God? The Lord's saying that's for you. He says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. The Lord says, is there anything my blood can't cover? And I'm going to redeem the time in your life. The Lord said, there's some things that were stolen from you at conception. And down the timeline, God says, I'm going to restore those things back to you. The Lord says, I'm just wanting you to respond with some yeses to some things I'm bringing to you. And the Lord says, as you do, from the end of the timeline, I'm going, shoo, 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 shoo. and you're going to go. The Lord said, you're going to walk where you once stumbled. And you're going to walk over things that were once a roadblock for you. You received that word, woman of God? Yes. How many received this in the Lord? Amen. How many know this is for everybody? Geo, this is for you. Forget the former things and don't dwell on the past. How many here get stuck dwelling on the past? Amen. Pastor Cindy in the sound booth will tell you we ministered for teenagers for years. We're about to have a bumper crop of teenagers to minister to, by the way. Beyond the Hall family. And we used to tell our kids all the time, there's no future in your past. We tell teenagers that. We told them that for decades. There's no future in your past. How many know as adults, we need to remember that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. It springs up. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. <laughs> the Lord said, forget the past. I'm going to make your desert a blossoming garden. Which means what? He's not promising to take you out of what you're in. 
He's promising to take what you're in and make it a garden. That's why I think as people of God, we need to let go of the spirit of escapism. Oh, pastor, if I could just move here. Oh, pastor, if I could just move there. Oh, pastor, I'm going to sell my house and I'm going to move here. Oh, pastor, I'm going to go over there. And I'm not picking on anybody. I've heard this stuff over the years. Okay, I'm not picking on anybody. Here's the problem. Wherever you are, there you are. And you know what the Lord is saying to you right now? I want to turn your desert into a garden. We need to let go of escapism. Because maybe where you are right now, God wants you to root deeply below, bear fruit above, and He's got the ministry for you here that you've always wanted. Amen. 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 Pastor, you're preaching kind of direct this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. You could have gotten an easy word anywhere. You came here. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap up in Judges chapter 6. Let's go to the Torah. Let's go to Judges chapter 6. Anybody remember this guy named Gideon? Yeah. Okay. Let's bring Kronos, Kairos, the timing of God. The destiny of God, and let's put it right now in a place where we can tie it all together as we begin to wrap up this word. By the way, how many have been blessed in this word? Amen. Yeah. Okay. Now it's interesting. From before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Don't worship the God of the Amorites in whose land you live. How many know if we stopped right there, you'd go, woohoo! Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, that's a good word, God. And then Holy Spirit speaks to the prophets and says, but you didn't listen. Yeah. How do you know prophetic words aren't always wonderful, encouraging, wind beneath your wings words? Amen. Sometimes there are, you didn't listen. But how do you know even when you get in a prophetic word, you didn't listen, Holy Spirit says, but this is what I want you to do. To get you back into the right place. Amen. 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 How many received that in the Lord? Amen. The Lord said, I wounded you so that I could heal you. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And some of us have been wounded by decisions we've made. Yeah. And the Lord is saying, you're wounded, but I'm your healer. And don't forget that. Yes. Right? So, how many know the prophets were calling it like it was? The Lord said, I delivered you. I gave you your own vine, your own tree. I mean, you were blessed. And all I said was this. Don't worship other gods. Remember the God who brought you here. In the world, they say it this way. Dance with the one who brought you. Pastor, I thought you say this up in the pulpit. I already did. Dance with the one that brought you. Every once in a while, the enemy asked me to dance. I say, no, I'm going to dance with the one who brought me. Yes. Amen? Amen? And he's brought me far, hasn't he? Yes. Let's talk about what the Lord has done. Yes. And the enemy goes, uh -huh. come on. Yes. Look what the Lord has done. Yes. Look what the Lord has done. Yes. Woo -woo -woo. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. He stays just the same. I'm going to praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Is that what we need to say when the enemy shows up? I'm going to dance with the one that brought me. Look what the Lord has done. Can I hear an amen? All right, stick around. Stick around. Okay. <laughs> All right, son. So the Lord says in verse 11, The angel of the Lord came down and sat under the oak in Orath for a year said that can't be Jesus hmm. and I said well how can it be Jesus because Jesus didn't exist till the New Testament oh. I said okay we're going to go back to Genesis 1 in the beginning and I just walked him through the reality of who Jesus was in that Bible study and by the time we were done with the end of the session he was like oh my I had no idea. Why can't Jesus show up in the Old Testament? He's the one who was and is and is to come. He's the one who said, let there be light. Without him was nothing made that was made. Can I hear an amen? We've got to get out of our theology and let the Holy Spirit reveal the truth. Amen? 
And it's interesting, he said that he showed up in, in the area that belonged to Joash, the Abiziite. Now that's interesting. Joash's name means Jehovah has given. And someone who was an Abiezerite was of the tribe of Manasseh. So remember, there are two half tribes Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay? These tribes came from what patriarch? Joseph. Joseph. When Joseph was married to whom? To an Egyptian. So these tribes were grafted in. Is anybody getting this? They were part Jew, part Gentile. And what did Abraham, and, and what did Jacob, the patriarch, say? Put one on each knee, they're my sons. How many know that was a prophetic picture? So how do you think some of the other tribes felt about Ephraim and Manasseh? Do you think maybe they said, well, you know, we're full-blooded Jews. Y'all came out of yeah. Joseph's marriage in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Y'all are from the other side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. Come on, anybody hearing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. And isn't it just like God to out of one of those tribes raise up a deliverer, a judge? See, at the end of the age, God is going to raise up people that nobody ever thought he would raise up. See, we've got to understand this, and this is prophetic. How many know when Pharaoh was bouncing Moses on his knee and cooing him and loving on him, he was raising up the very man that was going to destroy his empire. How many know that? Moses didn't know it and Pharaoh didn't know it. But the deliverer was being raised up right in Pharaoh's palace. And then God takes Moses to the dark side of the desert. Moses still doesn't know he's going to be a deliverer. And he hides them there from Pharaoh because Pharaoh put a death sentence on him when he killed the Egyptian. See, we've got to understand that. And then God, after Moses has made all these mistakes, tells him who he is. See, there's a lot of people right now that are getting saved and in the midst of all their mistakes, God's telling them who they are. How many receive that? Amen. Okay, hold on to that. It's some things Holy Spirit speaking. Okay, now what is Gideon doing? He's threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. So what's he doing? He's hiding this wheat and he's threshing it in a wine press because every time a, a crop is harvested, they sweep down and take it. They're enemies. Why are the enemies coming? Because Israel worshiped other gods. Right? Okay. <clears throat> so he's doing what? He's doing what he can. And the Lord says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, how many know Gideon probably went, hmm. he's like peeking up from the wine press going, Lord, who else is in the room? But how many know Gideon was a man of destiny? Can I hear an amen? amen? See, in the Old Testament, I loved it. God would hide people's destiny in their names. Because you know what Gideon means in the Hebrew? Mighty warrior. How many receive this? Amen. Or great warrior. God was calling him by name. He says, I am the Lord your God, and I summon you by name. So when he said Gideon mighty warrior, he was calling Gideon by the Hebrew meaning of his name. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Anybody ever know that? Isn't that interesting? He said the Lord is with you mighty warrior. See, Gideon didn't, didn't dispute his namesake. He knew God was playing on words. And what does he say? He says, but sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when he said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us to put into and put us in the hand of Midian. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know, every once in a while, God will give you the privilege of having a Kairos moment with somebody that grew up in the church, but has drifted from God. And they'll say things to me like that. 
you know what? I, I say to people, you know, I, I know that you don't know me, but God speaks to me for people, and I've got a word for you, and I'll deliver this word that I know is from the Holy Spirit, and you'll know what I get. Oh, I remember when God made me a promise. Oh, I remember when that church hurt me. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember that. Nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows. And I'm like, you just got a word from the Lord. <laughs> if I felt the presence of God going through me when that word was delivered to you, you should also. How many know Gideon does the same thing to God? Jesus is right there with him, manifesting the old covenant. And what's he saying? Really? Where's the God of Israel? He's in front of you, Gideon. But you can't really see who he is because you're so marred by the past. Come on. I'm going to say this in love. Folks, it's time to let go of some things. I'm hearing this message too. For some of us, Holy Spirit saying, it's just time to let go of some things. Because they're chains that are holding you back. They're around your ankles and your wrists. It says time let go of some things, right? And the word says in verse 14, God's not even going to defend anything. How many know God could have defended himself? Yes. He could have done a job. Well, where were you when I created the heavens? Where were you when I laid the foundations of the world? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what God simply says to him, and it's what God is saying to this generation right now, because the time is so short. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Um, how many hear what God is saying? What were we just reading in Isaiah 43, 18? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. We just saw this in Gideon's life. See, Gideon wanted to talk about the old thing. God wanted to talk about the new thing. How many know it's time to stop talking about the old thing and start talking about the new thing? Does anybody receive that? Yes. Well, pastor, you don't know. Pastor, you don't know. Pastor, you don't know. Maybe pastor's been through it. Or maybe pastor doesn't know. But it's not about the past. Let go of the past. Stop dwelling on it. And what does God say to Gideon? Go! In the strength you have. What strength do you have? The strength that I gave you when you were born, mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody catching this? Yeah, yeah. But then he says, but Lord or sir, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? Here we go again. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I'm the least in my family. Anybody hear the runt of the litter? You know what? You're a Gideon. Because God right now is going to the least of the clans and the smallest of the people. And he's saying the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. Step up and do what I preordained for you to do before the foundations of the world were laid. The Lord doesn't want our excuses. The Lord doesn't even want to know what our schedule is. He knows both. He just wants submission and obedience and to trust him. Because in the submission and obedience and trusting him, the water in your life is going to turn into wine. Hallelujah. You're going to go from dry pots to pots filled to the brim with water to the water turning into wine. Yay. Hallelujah. We don't need to inform the one who knows all things. Come on now. I'm going to receive that. The Lord answered, I'll be with you, and you'll strike down all the Midianites together. And Gideon replied, if I found favor in your eyes, give me a sign. You don't need a sign. He is the sign. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's really you talking to me. Please don't go away until I come back and I bring an offering before you. Um, you know what I like about Gideon? Even though there was a test there, the one that spoke over him, the one who told him these things, he wanted to give him an offering. He wanted to honor him. Does that make sense? Right? And that was a showing of honoring him, right? And so he takes some, some meat and some bread. He puts them together and some broth. Notice verse 20. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat, the unleavened bread, and place them on the rock. 
How many know it's time to put some things in your life on the rock? Yes. Amen. Amen. And pour out the broth, and Gideon did so. And with the tip of his staff, <laughs> the tip of his staff, the tip of whose staff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Genesis 49, what does Jacob say, the patriarch, regarding the tribe of Judah? The scepter will not depart until the one who comes to which it is due. I'm going to say it wasn't a staff as much as it was a scepter. Mm -hmm. So with his staff in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire flared up the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. Notice this, when Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, oh, sovereign Lord, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. He was just like Isaiah in Isaiah 6. What was he saying? I've seen God face to face. I'm dead. How many know it's time for us to meet God face to face and die? Yes. Amen. Unless the seed goes in the ground and dies, it can do nothing. And the Lord is saying, for some I've given you encounter after encounter, encounter after encounter with me. When are you going to be like Gideon and Isaiah and be willing to die? Amen. I heard an amen and a half. Amen. I th but I think you all know what I'm talking about, right? How many know the Lord who disappears now speaks? And the Lord said to him, Shalom. Don't be afraid, you're not going to die. What is Shalom? Nothing missing, nothing broken. Why would God give Gideon such a powerful destiny only for Gideon to see him and Gideon die? So we've got to understand that. There's some things where we just have to go, you know what? God said it. So if God said it and I believe it, I'm not going to die. Physically. Anybody get it? How many here have prophetic words that have been spoken over your life? Okay, and then the enemy comes and says, I'm going to take you out. No, he's not. Stand in faith. You're walking on a prophetic word. Peter's in the boat. Lord, if that's you, let me walk out. Jesus says, come. He walked on the word. Start walking on the word. Hallelujah. Bam. Come on. Oh, you're going to crash and burn. Where you're going to do this. You're going to do that. You step out, and I'm going to you. No, you're not. I'm stepping out on a word. Come on. How many hear this? Amen. Amen. So he said, don't be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there, and he called it, the Lord is peace. Do you know what he literally called it? Jehovah Shalom. See, a lot of the Old Testament names for Jehovah came out of people's encounters with God. Stay with me on this, please. I know I've been preaching for a while. Stay with me. See, Abraham is up on the mountain where you can see Calvary. And Abraham has Isaac on the altar and he's going to kill Isaac knowing God can raise him from the dead. And God speaks and says, Abraham, no! Do not hurt the boy. Abraham hears some rustling in the thicket. He looks over and there's a ram caught in the thicket. And he looks up to heaven and I believe he looks where Calvary was. And he said, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who provides. I believe he looked at Calvary and he said that. Come on. That no human sacrifice was ever going to do it. He was going to take the blood of the son of promise, the Lord Jesus. Can I hear your name, Amen. So a lot of these words, Jehovah, whoo, Jehovah Perazim, the Lord of the breakthrough. David hears the sound of the angels marching in the balsam trees. And God goes out and fights for him. He says, you're Jehovah Perazim. That's who you are. We can go through all these names. Jehovah Rapha, you're the Lord who heals. Elisha is pouring the salt in the polluted stream outside of Jericho that causes miscarriages and unproductive land. And he says, Jehovah is Rapha in this spring. How many receive this? Amen. 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 So this is where Jehovah Shalom comes from. The Lord our peace. And he says, this day it stands in Orpha of the Amizurites. Now notice this. That same night the Lord said to him, take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. <laughs> what is seven in the Hebrew? It's the number of completion. 
God is t God is speaking the number seven and the number eight over as many is over many of His people right now. The number seven is the number of completion. You've completed your years of toil and hard labor under burdens, under curses, under difficult things, under pain. And the Lord says, I'm calling you out of the Hebrew number seven and the Hebrew, Hebrew number eight. The Hebrew number eight is the number of new beginnings. And I believe he said, you know, now go grab that heifer that's seven years old because this is prophetic. This is an ending that's going to lead to a beginning. How many receive that? Amen. Right now, as you are getting ready to say yes to God on some things, you're at an ending that's leading to a beginning. Um, is anybody here in the word of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. And what does he say? He says, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asheroth pole beside it. And then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord on the top of its height using the wood from the Asheroth that you cut down and offer a second bowl as an offering to it. Two things amaze me here. Number one is that normally when there was something that had been used to worship another god, especially in the area of Jerusalem, God would say, tear it down, take it in the Kidron Valley, burn it, and throw the ashes into the brook. This one is interesting because God said, take the very items you tore down and make an altar for me. I'm telling you, God's about to tear down some things in our generation and make an altar out of those things for his glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you guys. Here's something else I want to point out. Remember, Gideon means mighty warrior. Do you know what else Gideon means? One who cuts down. What did he just do to the Asheroth pole? It was a Kairos moment. It was the fulfillment of his namesake. The mighty warrior would cut down the idolatrous altars of his father. What does your name mean? When I was very young, my mom gave me a, a little laminated card that had my name on it. It's still in the secret place. Um, it's it's in my uh, it's in my desk. It's right there. She gave it to me when I was like eight or nine years old. It's still there. Right? Everywhere I've gone, I've kept it with me. And it said Andrew, the Hebrew meaning of Andrew, strong and manly. Guys, I haven't always felt strong and manly. But I am who God says I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gideon's name meant great warrior who cuts down. What did God have him do? Become the great warrior who cut down the altars of his fathers. What does your name mean? You know what? You may research your name and your name, your name doesn't mean something that's that incredible. But you know what? The Lord calls you by a name that nobody else knows what it is. And the Lord says, you're about to come into my name's sake. The Lord says, you're about to come into the things that I have laid out for you before the foundations of the world were laid. The Lord says, it's time for you to come into the things that I put in the timeline for you. So I was seeking God for a word, and I came to someone who is prophetic in this house. And how many knows this is a prophetic house? Amen. Amen. And I went to that person, I said, I'm seeking God for a word. I'm not seeking God for the word. I'm seeking God for confirmation for some things he's speaking how many know we should seek out prophetic folks for confirmation? Yes. We should hear the voice of God herself. Amen. And that person sought the Lord and came back to me and said, Pastor Andrew, the Lord says, I am the Lord God Almighty, and I am bringing you into things that I've placed in the timeline. Mm -hmm. And I went, whoa, mm -hmm. that is so cool. I've got a word from you, for you, from the Lord. He is the Lord God Almighty, and you're coming in the things that he has placed for you in the timeline. What are they? Exactly what you need in this season. He knows exactly what you need when you need it. What do you need to be doing? Pursuing intimacy with Jesus, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, responding yes, and being ready. 
God's timing is rarely your timing. He, he said it in Isaiah. He said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts aren't your thoughts. As high as the heavens are from the earth are my ways than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, we've got to understand. But here's the thing. There's quite a gap, isn't there? How many for you right now, his ways are much higher than your ways and his thoughts are much higher than your thoughts? But you know what he's saying? Come up here. Come up here. He says, I'm calling you to a higher way of thinking. He says, I'm calling you to a higher level of anointing. He says, I'm calling you into a higher place. I'm calling you up like John on the Isle of Patmos in the spirit on the Sabbath day. Come up here! Because the Lord's functioning in a higher realm of glory than what you are. And he's calling you up. How many received that? Amen. Amen. If you receive that, let's just bow our heads now religiously for just a moment. And I'm going to ask Pastor Cindy to put on that little medley that I always love in the Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit is in this room. Holy Spirit. I just ask in humility that your anointing would increase in this room. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would move in this room right now. And Holy Spirit, may you stir the rhema that was released in this word in the hearts of everybody that's in this room. Holy Spirit, may you release a fresh fire over everybody in this room. How many want a fresh fire of the Lord today? Amen. 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 A word was given prior to the service that the enemy has tried to release complacency in this house. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the spirit of complacency to leave in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, whatever door it came through, I cover it in the blood of Jesus. And I command that assignment to be broken. That spirit to go out of this house and the door to shut behind it and lock in the realm of the spirits. For no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. We'll refute every tongue that comes against us. For this is our heritage as servants of the living God. And vindication from me, declares the Lord God Almighty. The Lord is saying this day, I'm calling my people into my Kairos timing. I'm calling my people into my Kairos timing. Come, come. He said at the feast, come unto me all who are burdened and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come, come. The Lord says right now, I'm calling you to me. Come. Come. And I want to encourage you right now. I want to encourage you right now to just say, Lord Jesus, I give you my yes to everything that you're asking me for. Lord, I'm asking you to make a garden in the desert I've been living in. And Lord, if I need to change for that to happen, I'm willing. Lord, if I need to change for that to happen, I'm willing. Because I'm sensing God is calling people into his timing right now. How many know that this message today was a Kairos message? The timing of the Lord was right on on this. I thought I was going to God was going to have me release some of this last week after Pastor, or Pastor, ooh, maybe that was prophetic. Yeah, after Scott was ministering in the Lord. Uh oh, look out. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, no. The Lord said, no. This was a day for the revival word. But today, I was so excited yesterday, just going back over these notes here and more from God. So excited because I knew the timing of this word was strategic. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare you are being called out of Kronos time and into Kairos time. 
Hallelujah. And if you receive that word, just say yes. And I want you to see yourself in the realm of the spirits moving to a higher level in the Lord. Don't move forward. That's Kronos. Move upward. That's Kairos. I decree and declare right now you're moving upward. And just as the Lord said to John the Beloved, come up here, I declare you're coming up higher in your thoughts. You're coming up higher in your relationship with Jesus. You're coming up higher in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You're coming up higher through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I declare you're going to start functioning at a higher level. And the Lord is saying this day, when you begin walking at a higher level, you begin making decisions from a higher place. And I decree and declare your decisions are going from lower to higher. That you're going to stop making decisions like an orphan, but you're going to start making decisions like a son. I declare God's calling you. God's calling you. God's calling you. Lord Jesus, I ask right now through your blood that you would break shackles, fetters, and chains in this room. Lord, if there's anything from previous seasons, previous decisions, previous things that have happened to people, God, I ask you to break those in the realm of the Spirit even now. And Lord, I ask that your people would begin to go higher. Lord, like a helium-filled balloon that somebody lets it go and it just goes shh, shh, and goes up. Lord, I ask God, May you break the things that are we're holding on to and are holding on to us and may your people go higher. May your people go higher. I command the weights of the enemy that are on your feet to slip off of you in the name of Jesus. And I speak you're going higher. I command every word curse that's ever been spoken against you that's held you lower to be broken through the blood of Jesus right now. I decree and declare every negative word spoken against you is broken through the blood of Jesus because divination has no power over Jacob and witchcraft has no power over Israel. I decree and declare God's breaking every family curse, every iniquity. God's breaking every lie of the enemy. God's breaking off everything from you that's been holding you back. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare you're about to go to a higher place in the Lord. The Lord says I'm giving you hind feet for high places. And the Lord says I'm going to teach you how to go from height to height and glory to glory. And I decree and declare you're moving in that in the name of Jesus right now. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare you're becoming everything that Jesus said you would be before he created the foundations of the earth. I decree and declare you are moving into the realm of glory that he's always wanted you to walk in. I decree and declare he's changing everything in your life. He saves the best wine for last. And I decree and declare over you as you go home today, as you live through this week, I decree and declare as God is moving things and shifting things, you will not hold on to things for dear life to try to hold them in the same place they've been. But you are going to step back, lift your hands up to heaven, praise the Lord, and let God move things in your life. Hallelujah. I declare that even as the flood broke loose and the plates in the earth opened up and the flood came from below and from above, yeah. I decree and declare that God is releasing flood waters over your life right now. Living waters, waters of revival, glory waters over you. And they're coming from below and from above. And I declare you're about to walk differently in the Lord than ever before. Does so anybody receive that in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. And I declare no more are you going to walk in hope deferred. I declare you're coming this day out of hope deferred into longing fulfilled. Hallelujah. And I declare this over you in the name of Jesus right now. Does so anybody receive that? Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And I decree and declare that the very God who sings songs of deliverance over you is pouring deliverance over your life like never before. Lord, may you wash away like a tsunami crashing down on a land mass. God, may you crash down over the people hearing this word. And God, may you wash away every stronghold, every iniquity, every hurt, every pain, all woundedness, things that have happened, wrong thinking. God, as the tsunami crashes down, may it wash all that away through the blood of Jesus into the sea of forgetfulness. And Lord, I just decree and declare that this is a people that's rising up. Lord, I declare like Gideon, these people are mighty warriors. Lord, I declare they're ones who cut things down. And they will cut down the enemy altars in their generations. Lord Jesus, I ask right now if there's anybody in this room and anybody listening in that the enemy has constructed enemy altars in their soul their mind, their will, their emotions. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would tear those altars down. Altars that the enemy wanted to sacrifice them on. Tear them down, God. Tear down the altars. And Lord, may you build an altar in its place like the altar that Elijah built on Mount Carmel. They put the sacrifice on and doused it with water and he prayed to you a simple prayer. God, show them who you are. And fire came down from heaven. Lord, may you pour out fresh fire over your people. May you pour out a fire that's going to burn up everything that's not of you. Lord, this day we ask for the all-consuming fire. Lord, this day we ask for the all-consuming fire. Lord, I ask that you would pour out a fire that would cleanse and burn. That would purify and renew. Lord, may you send a fire that's going to burn up everything that's not of you and purify everything that is, God. Lord, I decree and declare you're pouring out a fire over this house. You're pouring out a fire over this house. And Lord, I decree and declare a Cairo shift over this house right now. I declare a Cairo shift over this house right now. I declare a Cairo shift over this house right now. I declare a Cairo shifting over your life in the name of Jesus right now. I declare you're coming out of Kronos and into Kairos. That you're letting go of the old and you're laying a hold of the new. And I decree and declare God's marking you this day. Nothing will ever remain the same. Nothing will ever remain the same in your life. I decree and declare from this point forward you're going to walk in the deep timing of God. You're going to walk in the deep calling of God. You're going to walk in the deep places of God. And I decree and declare that in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would draw everyone hearing this word into a deeper place of intimacy with Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bring every one of us to a place where we walk like the five wise virgins. Lord, I ask that you would call everyone into this, in this place into a place of peg in the Hebrew, Lord God. A place of interceding, praying, fasting and watching and then walking in your Kairos moments. So Lord, right now, I'll say it again. I call this house out of the Kronos and into the Kairos. Lord, I call this house out of the first heaven and into the third heaven. Lord, I call this house out of complacency and into zeal for the Lord Jesus. Lord, I call this house to a higher place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just bless the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand in this place. I'm telling you guys, this was not an ordinary word today. This was an extraordinary word. Not because I preached anything. What the Holy Spirit released was extraordinary. 
I want to encourage you, if you have the time, listen to this word again. Meditate on this word. Ask God every single day as you're getting up. Okay, God, what do you want to do today? Holy Spirit, what's on the agenda? Holy Spirit, what in me do you want to deliver me from today? Holy Spirit, what area in my life is low level in thinking that you want to bring to a higher level? Lord, what is it? Let's do it. I want it. Let's go for it, God. Let's do it. Are you willing? Are you willing? Amen? Amen. Amen. And I just bless you now in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you just to put your hands up before the Lord. I asked the Lord, do you want us to play the blessing? And the Lord said, no, I want you to speak it over this body. Woo, let me get some fresh oil. Hallelujah. I just pray over you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord, may Adonai bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and fill you with shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. May the Lord God Almighty shalom you and shalom you. May he fill you with peace, deliverance, healing, and restoration. And may he restore back to you what the enemy has stolen, what the locusts and cankerworm have eaten, and what people have stolen from you. And I decree and declare, may the oil, the precious oil, pour down from the head onto the beard and into the collar of the robes of Aaron. May the oil that God is pouring out on the head of this house pour out upon you. And you are leaping like calves released from the stall. I declare you're about to come into levels of freedom in the Lord you've never walked in before. Levels of intimacy with Jesus you've never known before. I declare you're coming into the deep timing of God. And the things that held you back before will never hold you back again. I bless you in Jesus' name. I decree and declare you are sons of the living God and these sons are becoming the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. I declare the Gideon anointing over you, the mighty warrior anointing and the anointing to cut down the structures of the enemy and to build up the structures of God in our generation. And now I decree and declare you're going to go forth in the Kairos timing of the Lord. You are now a Kairos people and Kronos has no more authority over you. The dominion, power, and authority of the Lord Jesus has been poured out upon you. And I pray over you now a release of the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, the spirit of counsel, might, and knowledge. May the spirit of the sovereign Lord be upon you to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, and to set at liberty those who sit in darkness, to decree the year of the favor of the Lord, the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort those who grieve in Zion and to pour upon them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise in the place of the spirit of despair, depression, and oppression. And I decree and declare that you are oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor, and that just as the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, the Lord Jesus came and spoke to Gideon, and he began to walk out his destiny. I decree and declare the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is speaking over you today, and you're being released into your Kairos destiny in the Lord. In Jesus' name, I bless you now. Amen. 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 Amen.
Woo, were you blessed today? Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you guys, Holy Spirit was telling me this all service long. We are so close to stepping into a mighty move of God. We are so close. But if we're here and the mighty move of God is at the end of this aisle, okay, all the way there back, the snares of the enemy are waiting there. There's excuses, there's lies, there's people to pull us and tug us, there's our own flesh we're dealing with, there's a line of snares. But if there's a line of snares between here and there, God says, I'm going to teach you how to walk above. Ha -ha! And you're going to keep moving on in the Lord. Hallelujah! You're going to walk in the glory of the Lord. How many received that? Amen. How many received that? Yes. Amen. 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 Ms. Daniel, would you come up front, please? I want you to blow the shofar over us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! How many know when the shofar was blown, it was time to go to battle? Hallelujah. When the shofar was blown, the battle was won. <laughs> when the shofar was blown, it was time to feast. Hallelujah. Oh, let's blow that shofar three times, woman of God. <laughs> Go forth. Woo! Hallelujah in peace. May the mountains and the hills break forth before you. Oh, may you go out with joy and be led forth with peace. May the blessing of God be upon your entire week. And may you have Kairos moment after Kairos moment after Kairos moment in the Lord. May you have dreams and visions. May you begin walking in the fulfillment of the greatest outpouring of Joel chapter 2 and Amos 9. May you rebuild the fallen tent of David. Hallelujah. And in your life, in your life, may the harvester overtake the planter. May the one who is tending the vines be overtaken by the one that's crushing the grapes to make the wine. I bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for coming. I pray you were blessed in the Lord today. I was blessed just being in the flow. Hallelujah.